today we want to talk about the ministry of prayer we want to talk about the ministry of prayer and we have read from the from the gospel according to saint matthew chapter 7 uh, starting from verses 7 all the way up to verses 12 but we notice that abraham prayed we notice that uh, esther prayed we notice that daniel prayed we notice that nehemiah prayed we notice that David prayed, even Jesus himself used to pray, the early church used to pray, while Peter in prison, the church also prayed for him. So we want to think about prayers this morning, so let us pray. Speak to us, our Heavenly Father, this morning, and may the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable before you, O God. Speak to us and illuminate your word in our spirits, because it's a humble prayer of faith, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We want to begin by asking ourselves, what is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is people's communication, or communion, or conversation with God. It is people's communication, communion, or conversation with God. It involves the following, uh, the following uh, seven things that I would want to mention. One, it is calling God. It is calling God. When you read Psalms 17 verse 6, it will talk about calling God. The second thing is that it is calling on the name of the Lord. When you go to Genesis chapter 4 verses 26, you hear that the, the people of that time, they began to call on the name of the Lord. So it is calling on the name of the Lord. 
The third thing is crying out to the Lord. Crying out to the Lord. When you read Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, you hear that in the days of his flesh, here on earth, Christ would cry out to the Father with loud groanings unto him who was able to save him. So it is crying out to the Lord. The fourth thing is that it is lifting up one's soul to the Lord. When you are leading or giving the Holy Communion, we would say, lift up your hearts. And then we say, we lift them up to the Lord. So Psalms 25 verses 1, we will talk about that. Lifting up one's soul to the Lord. Then number five, it is seeking the Lord. When you read Isaiah 55 verses 6, it will talk about seeking the Lord while he may be available. We need to seek the Lord while he may be available. Then the sixth thing is that it is approaching the throne of grace with confidence. Approaching the throne of grace with confidence. We know that we need to get to the presence of God. We, need, we know that we need to hear what the Lord is telling us. And therefore, when all this is happening, we need, we need to approach the throne of grace with confidence. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 will tell us that. Then, the seventh thing is that it is drawing near to God. Drawing near to God. The Lord keeps on inviting us to Him. And we also need to draw near to Him. When you read Hebrews chapter 10 verses 22, He's talking about drawing near to Him. Drawing near to God. And in the book of James, he will even say, draw near to me, and I will also draw near to you. The question that we should be asking ourselves then, therefore, is, why should we pray? When I was in Sunday school, we used to sing a song. Why worry when you can pray? Trust Jesus, he knows the way. Now, after that, we did not know what the other part was saying. Some of us would say, we would just eat was la la ba la ba la 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 And then we say, so why, why, why worry when you can pray? Of course we are saying, it was supposed to say, don't be like the doubtful Thomas. Jesus knows the way. So why worry, why worry when you can pray? So why should we pray? Number one, God commands his followers to pray. God commands his followers to pray. And you can read this in Colossians chapter 4, verses 2. God commands his followers to pray. He desires our companionship. And he wants to spend more time with us. And this can only happen when we are praying. So he desires our companionship and wants to spend more time with us. The second thing is that prayer connects us with God and helps us to understand his will and plan for us. Remember God knows about our life. He knows the beginning to the end. And so when we connect ourselves, when you read again Psalms 139 verses 16 thereabout, you will hear about that God had ordained the life all the days of our lives even before we had lived one. So he wants to have that kind of communion, that connection, so that he can show us what is there for our lives. So prayer connects us with God and helps us to understand his will and his plan for our lives because God has a plan for you, God has a plan for me, God has a plan for everyone. So in return, this enables us to receive blessings and promises that are fulfilled. So it connects us to God's uh, purpose and, uh, and, and God's power. And you can read this in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. Or you could this, uh, that is uh, Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. Acts 1, verses 14, and so on and so forth. The third thing is that prayer shapes us. Uh, our spiritual activities, more so in mission work. We can never do effective mission work without prayer. Uh, Paul Yogishaw has written a, a book, Prayer Key to Revival, and I would want to ask you to 
to, to go and read that book. If you get it, please read it because it is beneficial to your spiritual life. Even there is another one written by somebody called Larry Lee. He's also talking about prayer. So everything has to happen in the spiritual world first before it takes place in the physical. One time I listened to, to Reinhard, the late Reinhard Bonke, and he was saying that when he was coming to Kenya, for example, for preaching, he would take like six months to pray and organize his team, and they would continue to pray six months before. And of course, evangelism by fire would take place. But remember, some people had been praying six months before time. We need to pray. Prayer shapes spiritual activities, more so in the mission work. Wherever we are, we are the militant church in the world. We are in mission and we need to pray. So what, and you can read this in Matthew chapter 9 verses 38. You can read this in Exodus 33 verses 11. They will talk about that. So what are the requirements for effective praying? What are the requirements for the effective praying? One, for effective prayer, we must have faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of, the, uh, uh, the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. For by it the men of old attained approval. And when you go to verse 6, it will say, And without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe that he is the rewarder of them that seek him uh, diligently. God is listening to our prayers. And he will answer them. Don't be cheated that you will not answer your prayers. The prayers that you pray every day, they don't go into a dustbin. They go somewhere in heaven. And one day, they will be answered. And you can still read this in Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 24. You can read this in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22, following, or even the book of James chapter 5, verses 15. Actually, James chapter 5 says, the effectual, fervent prayer, the effectual, fervent prayer availeth much. And so prayer is important, it is powerful. The second thing is that it should be made in Jesus' name. Don't make a prayer in the name of your grandfather. It will not go anywhere. Don't make a prayer in the name of your pastor. It will not go anywhere. Don't make a prayer in the name of that wizard or wizardess. It will not go anywhere. It should be made in the name that is above every other name. The name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Doing it in Christ's approval and his authority. We must know the name of Jesus. One of these five days we'll talk about the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Being aware of who Christ is and what he represents. You can read this in John chapter 13. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. And I can quickly read this for you. John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. This is what it says. And I, will, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And I will do it. You ask in my name, and I will do it. That is such a beautiful promise. The third thing is that, Pray in harmony in God's will. That is perfect. Pray in harmony in God's will. That is perfect. You can read this in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 10. Or Matthew chapter 26, verse 42. Or Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew 6, verse 10. Matthew 26 verse 42 or Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and, say, and 2 says, Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable before God, so that you may know what is his, his perfect will concerning your life. So it must be 
Uh, it must be in prayer must be in harmony in God's will. The first thing is that it must be living in God's will. It must be living in God's will. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, talks about, but first of all, seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, I was talking to my wife the other day. We are praying and then we said, we remember this verse, that God is saying, we first of all seek his, king, you know, his kingdom and its righteousness and all these things. So sometimes we go asking for things instead of first of all seeking the kingdom. So Matthew 6, 33 and 1 John 3, 22, we need first of all to, to seek the kingdom of God first, following God's commands. What does God say about your life? What does God say about my life? And adhering to his instructions. He may be saying something, but I'm not adhering to his instructions. I need to adhere to his instructions. And then, of course, I must have a right relationship with God. If my relationship with God is not right, I need, first of all, to stop whatever I'm doing, go back and repent, ask for cleansing so that I'm able to move. A right relationship with God. Number five is persistence in prayer. I know you know the story of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 42b to 45, that Elijah prayed and sent his servant seven times before the rains came. That persistence, he's kneeling, he's praying, and then he sends, nothing happens. The first time, the second time, the third time, fourth time, sixth time, and even on the seventh time, he saw the cloud like a small uh, hand, you know, and then he told his, his servant, run, and they ran because the rain was coming. Persistence in prayer, and even Christ himself gave an example of the unjust king. This widow was going to the unjust king until the king had that recent to this lady. You can even see what you have read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It is telling us to seek, to knock, and to find. So it is a continuous present. In fact, when you look at these passages, they are talking about a present continuous tense. And then Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 7 is the one that will talk about the persistent window. So stop worrying over situations. Stop worrying over COVID-19 but rather take them to the Lord in prayer. Take them to the Lord in prayer. Take these issues that we are seeing here to the Lord in prayer because the answer is not with the government. The answer is not with your neighbor. The answer is not even with the church. The answer is with the Lord himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, what are the biblical elements and methods of effective praying? Biblical elements and methods of effective praying. Yes, you are praying. Are you effective in your prayer? So what are the methods that we need to develop? One, there are five of them and then I'll close. Number one, genuine praise and adore God. Not just in words or songs, but also in our lives. Let us learn to praise. There is power in praise and worship. And then adore God. Let us adore Him. Because he is who he was and who is and he is going to be forever and ever. Genuine praise. Don't just praise because it is on a Sunday morning. Don't just praise because other people are praising. Do it from the depth of your heart. Genuine praise and adore God. Not just in the words. Don't just sing words or even song. But even your very life should show the fruitfulness of the prayer life that you are reading. Number two, thanksgiving to God. Thanksgiving to God. Show gratitude to God for all he has done for us and for all who he is. When you read Psalms 116, verses 12, it will ask us, what shall I render to the Lord for all that he has done unto me? The issue of thanksgiving, pouring from your heart, Telling God, thank you, very important in prayer. Some people will rush to ask for things, but do we really thank him? Because there was a time there was no COVID. 
Did we not even thank him that despite the COVID, he is still taking us through? Are we thanking him that we can breathe? Are we thanking him that this nation is at peace? Are we thanking him for the many good things that he is doing to us also? The third thing is sincerely confess and move away from our sins. We are in this world that is full of sin. We must confess our sins. I must confess my sins to the Lord first and to my brother if need be or my sister. But we need to confess our sins and move away from them. If you look at David in Psalms 51, he knows he has sinned against, he has sinned against God and he is repenting his sins. He tells God, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cut me away from your presence. We need to learn to God with that kind of an attitude. Let us learn to repent. Let us learn to repent our sins, not pointing fingers at others, but first of all looking inwardly at ourselves and confess them. Luke chapter 18 verse 13, we'll talk about the same. And even the book of James chapter 5 verses 15 to 16, we also talk about the same. Then number four, when we ask in faith and not in doubt, and also with the right motives, we must learn to ask in faith without doubting, because if we doubt, we can be sure. James has told us in 4.23 of James that if we ask doubting, we will not receive anything. And also Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 to 11 is telling us about that asking in faith. And Philippians chapter 4 verses 6, we repeat the same thing. When we ask, we ask in faith and not doubt. When you pray, when you ask, have that attitude. I ask the Lord to give me uh, this or the other one. Believe it shall happen and it will happen. Create an atmosphere for, for, for a miracle to take place. Do not doubt in your heart. And also with the right motives. Don't go asking for... One time I attended a meeting somewhere in Nairobi and somebody was telling them, uh, the, the preacher there was telling people that he has an anointing to kill other people who are not in tune with him. That is the wrong motive. That is ungodly. Don't fast and pray so that people will have problems. Don't fast and pray so that those whom you love, you don't, who are not with you, they will not go your way. Have the correct motive. Even if they are your enemies, they are also created in the image and in the likeness of the Lord. And finally, pray with passions for others. Intercede. Do serious intercession. The church prayed for Peter while he was in prison in the book of Acts. And they prayed with passion. And even Peter, when the angel came, and then he moved out, walked the first street, the second street, the third street. When they went there, when Peter went to the house of, Mark, uh, of John Mark, even the lady who opened the door could not believe. But passion uh, 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 of prayer, passion for prayer, that intercession was being made for him. We need to pray with the passion. Psalms 122, Psalms 122, verse 6 to 9, will tell us about that. The issue of praying with passion, and even the gospel of to St. Luke 22, verses 31. So brothers and sisters, as I close this morning, may the Lord help us to pray, and to pray effectively. And my parting shot is this, that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. I want to pray with you who is feeling sick. I want to pray with you who is feeling downtrodden. I want to pray with you who is feeling that you need to be strengthened once again. I want to pray with you who is seeing only darkness, that the Lord himself will come and restore you. So wherever you are, stand up on your two feet, and then we shall pray and close. Let us pray. God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this sister who is not feeling well, for this brother who is feeling downtrodden, for this person who is feeling that he has come to his own end, O oh God. We pray that you may remember them, O oh God, if there's anybody who is thinking about committing suicide, we turn round against that spirit of suicide 
and we pray that they may be set free today in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for them that businesses have gone down, that Lord you shall uplift them again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for them that are worried about how they are going to live beyond this time, that Father you shall stand with them. We pray for every need that is being lifted up to you right now, O God, that you may meet with your people in accordance with thy word in Christ Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you and we want to praise your name because this is our prayer of faith and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to make the final prayer with us. I want to make the final prayer with every one of us. And so, as we continue to pray, I want to pray now. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you wherever you will be in this country or wherever you are in the world. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord watch over your children. May the, watch, may the Lord watch over your, your parents, your brothers and sisters, wherever they are. And may the Lord be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week until we meet again. Thank you. God bless you. Asante Chini ya pendo